Welcome to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center podcast. We hope that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a word from pastors here at The Rock. So I guess the question tonight is, are you ready to run, church? Ooh, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. We'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll get a more fiery answer as the service progresses. But let's do this. Let's go ahead. As we're, as we're ready to get into the word today, let's go ahead and prepare our hearts for prayer. Uh, and, and so let's go ahead and bow our heads right now. I know we've been standing and sitting a lot. So let's go ahead and bow our heads and let's go ahead and come before the Lord in prayer. So, Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your greatness. God, we thank you that today your blessing is upon each and every person in this room. So, Lord, as we, as we present our hearts to be spoken to and molded by the hand of God, Father, we pray that you would speak to us in a way that we can understand, in a way that we can hear hear your voice, not a man's opinion, not a young man or an old man's idea, not, not, not from a woman, Father God, or of any specific ethnicity or race, but God, today we came to hear from the Holy Spirit because opinions will just not do. We need the truth tonight. So, Father God, bless us today as we've come seeking for more of you to hear from your Holy Spirit, the teacher of the church today. And, God, as we pray, Father God, we also pray for each and every other church, Lord God, that's been ministering this entire weekend over the Inland Empire and even around the world, Father God, regardless of the denomination, Father God, whether they be Seventh-day Adventist, Father God, our Catholic brothers and sisters, a Presbyterian, Father God, Protestant brothers and sisters. God, we ask that you would bless them, Father God, as we all strive to hear and become more like Jesus Christ. So, Father, we thank you, Father, for those out there that labor among us in the Word of God, talking and speaking about Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for these things, Father God, and all things we say, amen. Well, let's get into the word today. In case you're not too sure, my name is Pastor Richard Villanueva. I'm, I'm the youth pastor here at this church. I have the amazing privilege of being able to speak to the teenagers between 7th through 12th grade. And today, I have the honor to, 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 to present a word to you. Now, tonight is generation to generation. It's a little bit different, but don't be scared. Don't worry. It's good. You're going to see three miracles today. That's right. Three preachers preaching on time. But there's one, there's one request we have. We're going to preach fast, so you have to listen fast, too. So if you can do it, there's some good things to be captured today. So today, let's get into the word. Today, I don't know if you can tell, we're talking about running. Now, the Bible tells us really, the Bible tells us a lot of really neat things about running, the idea of running. As a matter of fact, if you look in the word, you'll find time after time that God describes our life as a walk, as a race, as a run. So today, let's, let, let's jump real quick into Hebrews 12, verse 1. It says, therefore, we also, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. The sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that has been set before us. It, it gives me the picture. It gives me a picture uh, 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 of the World Olympics in, in a stadium setting where there you have the field of the runners getting ready, chalking up, getting up to the line. They're, they're, they're stretching it out, getting their muscles a little loose. They're, 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 they're doing their thing. And, and in the stand is a crowd waiting to cheer them on, waiting to push them further further in their race. And that's a picture of your life. You may not realize it, but you have people. You have saints gone before rooting for you. You have your own personal cheerleading section in heaven. Makes you feel kind of good. And then the Bible tells us that God is desiring us to begin to get ready to prepare for the start of a race. You see, today you can only gain victory in your life in the race if you've begun the race. Nobody wins the prize if they stay at the starting line. Nobody will get the gold if they stay still when the gun goes off. Today, people have, people have been told great things. Maybe in this place you've grown up in church and you've heard the word of God. Maybe you know some of the truths and you can quote scripture better than me, myself, which is probably not too difficult. But, but the problem is this, is you know a lot, but you do a little. Uh, can I preach to myself tonight? Can I, can I preach to myself tonight? You see, today you may be still at the starting line, waiting for somebody to tell you to go. Today, can, can this short preacher here today tell you to go? Can, can I encourage you? Can I tell you that the gun has gone off and it's time to get moving? Look, they, God gave you them thighs for a reason, so let's start moving it. Pump that, pump those muscles, pump that iron, somebody. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24, it says, everybody runs in a race, runs. That's why it's called a run. 
a race to, to, to run. It says only one gets a prize. Run in such a way. Nobody wins unless you start. I, I love what 2 Corinthians says. If you want, turn there. Keep on going. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. I, I don't want to stay too long up here because there's a lot more going on. But th this, this verse, when I, when I read it, when I heard it, when I was meditating on it, it, it kind of struck me like lightning. It, it says here. In 2 Corinthians 2, verse, excuse me, 6, verse 2, it says, the Lord speaks and says this, In an acceptable time, I, the Lord, have heard you. In the day of salvation, I have helped you. Now, it continues on, and it tells us when this verse applies to us. It says this, it says, Behold, look, see, open your eyes, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You see, the Bible is telling us, God says, indeed, the right time is now. Today, today. Somebody say today. Somebody say right now. Somebody slap yourself. No, don't do that. Today is the day of salvation. You see, God said right now, not yesterday, not tomorrow. Funny thing about tomorrow, it always seems to be a day put off. Tomorrow is not the day today. I don't know if you're waiting for a sign, but this is your sign. God says today, right now. You see, you, if you've been wondering, I, I, I'm just getting ready to tithe. No, now is the time to tithe. Uh, I got, I'm just waiting for the healing. No, no, no. Now is the time for healing. God, I, I'm just getting up the courage to make the phone call. No, now. Now is the time for the phone call because you've put that off too long. You have waited too long to say, I'm sorry. You have waited too long to ask for forgiveness. You have waited too long. You look, 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 look. Tomorrow is just as good as today because the Bible tells me and I believe it tells you that the perfect time will never come. The only perfect time is now. And it seems funny because you know it's not perfect. The situations don't line up. The stars are in the right movement. You're waiting for the shooting star so you could wish upon it, just like the little cricket told you. But, but what are you waiting for? Because the Bible tells me, God's word tells you and I that tomorrow is not promised. So why, why bank your whole future on something that's not guaranteed when we know very well that today the breath in your lungs is what you have. And today and now, 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 now is the time to do what you know to do. So let's stop reasoning and justifying our motives and ideas. And let's just put all the bologna aside. Because the truth is, ain't nobody like bologna sandwiches either. Uh, well, maybe, anyway. Maybe it's for fried, but that's not the point. Now is the time. You know, today after, after the service tonight, we're doing something kind of interesting. We're doing baptisms. Maybe you're thinking, Pastor Richard, I got baptized. Hey, that's cool. Me too. But the reason we're doing that, the reason we're talking about that and doing that during a, 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 a night about running is because baptisms, baptisms speak about something that maybe you haven't thought of. Baptisms is a fresh start. It, it, it's a time to start a race. You see, Jesus started his ministry on a after a baptism. You, you, you see, the disciples were told, don't do anything until you receive a baptism. Uh, John the Baptist, when he was out at the river, he told people, repent and be baptized. And when those people went in the water, they, they left a different person. They got a fresh start. Uh, it's funny, in the Old Testament, there was a man named, named Naaman, and, and, and his body was broken and racked with leprosy. His body said it's time to die, but God had a different plan for him. And he went, as the, as the Lord told him, into a river and dipped seven times. And, and, and the death sentence that the world had put on him was changed, and it stayed in the river as he walked out. So tonight... If your life has been changed, tonight maybe something amazing has happened in your life and the person you are now is not the person you were. Maybe tonight you know you need a fresh start. Maybe you just gave your heart to the Lord this morning. Tonight is the time for you to get up and go. The gun has gone off. God is saying today, so what have you got to lose? Why are you going to wait another minute? Because today, right now, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of your fresh start. Today is the day to begin the race that you've been putting off for a little too long. So why? I wait another moment when you can do it now. 
before I hand the, the baton over to the next fire-breathing preacher, uh, we wanted to recognize some people who have started the race. You know, in the past year, we've had an amazing amount of SPTs, our spiritual personal trainers, graduate through the program. They've done five weeks, coming to church early, sitting with a spiritual personal trainer. They've been, you know, getting some free munchies, hearing about the Word of God, learning what it takes to not just start a race but finish it. So if there, I, I'm just curious. If there's anybody in this room that has done or gone through the SPT program in the past year, the past 12 months, could you please stand up? I just want to see. If you've gone through the SPT program in the past 12 months... It, Let's, let's give it up. This is, see, go ahead, stand on up. That's right, young, old, in between. You know what? Congratulations to you because you've taken five weeks and you've said, I'm not going to wait until it's too late. You guys have started the race. And you know what? Folks, you've started the race well. And when you start the race well, it makes it that much easier to finish the race. You guys are doing good. Go ahead, grab a seat. Go ahead, grab a seat. Let's give it up. You know, we've had over 500 people at graduate the SPT program in the past year. 500 people that had a head start in the things of the Lord. And also, too, let me, let me ask one more time. Because you know, some of you, maybe you've been running the race, but you just decided to join us in our race here at the Rock Church to what, what God's had for us here in the Inland Empire, and you've become new members in the past 12 months. If you have gone through our membership uh, class, can you, in the past 12 months, could you stand up too? Anybody who's, who's gone through the membership class in the past 12 months, uh, if you're out there, come on, stand up, stand up, stand up. Let's give it up. Let's give it up. That's right. You see, maybe you've been walking with the Lord a long time, but today... You know, in the past 12 months, you've said, I'm going to run alongside the, the family that God's put here in the Inland Empire. We want to thank you guys because, you know, we are family. We are together. And, to, and together here at this church, with your work and our work, being faithful to the Lord, the Inland Empire shall be saved. Let's give it up one more time for our brand new members here. Go ahead and grab a seat. Now, in, in, in true running style, as, as, I pa as, as I pass the microphone over to Pastor Joel over Alvarado, I also want to go ahead and pass the baton. Pastor Joel, please take this leg of the race away from me. <laughs> thank you, Pastor Richard. You know, thank you guys. They called me up and they said, you got 10 minutes. So I whittled my sermon down from 10 points to one. You know, they say don't give a preacher a mic. Here's why. Because we could rattle on and tell you stories and all kinds of things. But here's my one point. My part, this position here that I have tonight is how do you push through when you want to quit? Starting, we could all start. There's thousands of races that start. You've started your race as an SPT. God bless you. We tell you here, here, and we continue to tell you from this rock pulpit, give us a year. If you give us a year, you'll get grounded and rooted, and your life will change forever. Because it's just not about the starting. It's about the going through and pressing through when you want to give up, when you would feel like giving up, when you want to do everything possible to say cut and run. How do you stop from doing that? Here's my one point. My one point is found in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. It says, no temptation has overtaken you, which is common to man, that God is faithful. Everybody say this with me. God is faithful. God is faithful that he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, beyond the temptation that will provide a way of escape that you will be able to endure it. Here's why I'm using that scripture. I'm now pushing through, pressing in, moving on, because even in your worst day, God makes a way. Even when you want to quit, why is that scripture important to us today? If you study the Greek, and I don't know Greek, the only Greek I know lives down the street. The only one I know is down the street. If you study the original translation, it means God has crafted a design way, unique, formed fashion for you and you 
and you. Since God is a God of design and order, he knows what makes you work. He knows when you want to quit. He knows when you want to give it up. And he's designed a pathway of success to win uniquely for you. That's why this scripture is so powerful. You know, when we run this race, we have to understand that defeat is a temporary position. Giving up is permanent. So when we fall, we fall forward. We tell you to come back to church. We tell you to plug into church. We tell you when I lead people to Christ in the back in the altar care room, I say get back to church. Why is it so important to get back to the house? Because this is where you get the encouragement. This is where you get the word of God. This is where you get the bless me. This is where you get the hope in the house of God. You don't get it in front of your television. You don't get it with your neighbors. You get pumped. You get renewed. You get revived in the house that God built. Some of you are discouraged. Let me challenge you. Some of you are discouraged because you come to church once a month. Some of you are discouraged because you used to come passionately because now you're getting discouraged. You're falling away. Well, today is a new day to move forward and let God provide a way out. I love that the Bible is made up full of failures. Failures. People that couldn't make it on their own. People that couldn't speak, Moses. People that couldn't even see straight. People that were blind. They were, I mean, I picture the guy that was, that was maimed and, and Jesus uses him a testimony and he runs all over the countryside blabbing about the Lord. Why is that such a big deal to Jesus? Because he's in the business of finding nobodies to make somebody and make you a winner. Because we know, and here's our hope, the only winner is Jesus Christ. He's the one, and he's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the only one that can make it for you. If you feel like giving up, if you feel like dropping the baton, you need to pick it up and keep on working. Keep on moving step by step. Hope by hope. In faith, we can make this happen. And the kingdom is made up of individuals that have lost a lot of things. But in the, in the end, all of Hebrews, the Bible teaches us that they won because they prevailed in their faith. If you feel like giving up, there's hope for you because where even in your worst day, God makes a way. And you have to trust God more than you trust yourself. You have to trust what God is bringing you to. You know, this is seasonal. I love how Pastor Jim and Deborah taught how, about finances, that, that, that money is a replenishable resource. Okay, so you lost a lot, but down the future, you can get it all back in the name of the Lord. So you've lost a marriage, so you've lost a house. That kind of stuff can be replaced in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, if we give the right perspective, he looks at the whole big picture, not just the one time you failed. As a matter of fact, the Bible doesn't even call you a failure. It calls you a winner because in Jesus, we already won. Amen. Now, I could go on forever, but Pastor Jessica is going to come up here and challenge you how to finish strong. Pastor Jessica, will you come up and let me hand you the baton. Amen. I just love the men in the house. Don't we have incredible men of God? You know, our church is unique because we are different in many ways. There are many colors, races, different genders in this church. And we here on, as a teaching team, we hold each other up. And we run this race together, as you can tell. I love Pastor Richard and his passion and his love and his hope and, and the encouragement that he gives to your teenagers on a day-to-day -day basis. Pastor Joel, he teaches our breaking free. And he teaches you how to run through those valleys and how to get to the next step. And, you know, this baton is just not something that, that I grabbed. We, Pastor Dan and I... And Pastor Luke and Joey and, and some of the other people that went with us, we went to Rama. And when we graduated Bible college, they handed us this baton and they said, it is now time for you to run your race. And I want to use this as just a figurative example of I'm handing this to you, church. And it is time for you to run your race. Now, you can't run your race like Pastor Richard said and not 
go when the finish line begins. You cannot run your race by sitting. You have to be standing. You have to be ready to go. You have to be ready and hearing what God has for you. Because I know the Lord has a word for you in your season and in your time and in your place. You have to seek him. You say, oh, here we go. Yeah. Because you don't finish strong unless you are in the face of God. You have to get into the face of God. You have to find out what it is that God wants from you and what it is God wants from me and what it is that God needs from us as a team and as a body and as a unity. And generation to generation, I believe, is going to be the spark and the fire. When that gun goes off, we are beginning this race and we are going to run together because we are a unified body. We are in love with Jesus Christ. We have a call and a purpose on our life. And every single one of you sitting in these seats today, God has a name for you in the book of life. He has your name written. He knows where you're going. He knows the next steps you're taking. And if you're running the race with him, he's going to lead you down that step. And I just love that they gave me finish strong. But you know, I could just kept praying. I was like, God, finish strong. You know, I'm just still running this race. I want to make sure I do finish strong. I mean, Pastor Jim and Deborah, they should be, like, beginning to teach this. They're not even finished. But they should go there because they've been through so much. And the Lord just brought me here. He said, your dad was in Hebrews. I loved this because I was listening on Wednesday night in Hebrews. He brought us to Hebrews 12. Turn there. Hebrews 12. Pastor Richard went there. I thought it was interesting that he went there because God brought me to Hebrews 12 too. And I'm going to read it to you. It says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. I'm going to stop there. We are surrounded by a, gr- a cloud of great witnesses. You know what that means? That means somebody else has already done it. They've already accomplished it. And they've already been there, done that. And now they're rooting us on going, come on, you can do it. I know you can because I did. I'm here with Jesus, but I'm rooting you on from down up here. And listen, there's a great cloud of witnesses cheering you on, saying you can walk this road with Jesus Christ. You can be bold in your generation. You can be bold when this world wants to shut you down. No, you open your mouth and you preach the gospel and you make my name famous. That's what God is asking us to do. We are running this race. So the great cloud of witnesses is going and they're cheering us on. Let us lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. This is where I got it. Verse number two. Looking unto Jesus. How do I finish strong? We look unto Jesus. We look unto Jesus. That means we are seeing nothing else but Jesus. That means that when I am hearing evil in my ears and when I am seeing evil when I turn the TV on or when I'm out in public and I see things that are ungodly when I hear the negative reports or when I have hopelessness come hopelessness come you know I'm a pastor I hear some heartbreaking things on a daily basis but oh I know that I've got to look to Jesus because I can't look at the reports that I hear about the members of this church oh but I gotta look to Jesus because I know he is the author and he is the finisher of this faith and I know that what he has began to work in you and in your lives that he is going to finish it and complete it but see we have to look to him it is so easy for us as the body of Christ to get distracted I love that that the sticker that says not of this world and we have so many people with those on our cars but really Are we living not of this world? See, we have to run this race in our lane. That road is narrow. God says that it is a narrow road. I don't know about you, but I want to be running my race down that narrow road. I want God to be like, yes, well done, good and faithful servant. And just like he has it for us, he has laid a path for us. He has made a way for you. He says, just keep your eyes on me. Just keep looking to me. Take your eyes and your heart and put them and focus them on God. Do not allow anything to distract us, being fixed on him and him only. He will begin to see things through your eyes. You will begin not to see what you see, but you will begin to see what God sees when we stay focused on our king. And that's what we need in this world that we live in. He wrote the story of your life because he is the author of your life and my life. And I love that because that means that since he wrote the story, All I got to do is just tap in and go, okay, what's next? I'm just playing this out here, God. And you just tap into the Holy Spirit and you keep your focus on him. And he will begin to walk you through the story that he has called you and wrote for you. Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. 
And then the other part of that verse, let's go back to Hebrews 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. The joy that was set before him endured the cross. He, wow, he endured the cross with joy? Yeah. So obviously your valleys and the deserts that we all will go through, every single one of us will be faced with something in our world, in our life. But listen, if he did it, you can do it. And if he did it with joy, you can ask him to help you do it with joy. And he is an example for us to follow. And he did it, and he went before the way before us so that we could follow his example. See, when, <coughs> when hard times hit, oh, God knows that they're coming. But if you stay focused on him and you endure till the end, you will prosper. In Luke 6, 22 <coughs> through 23, turn there. <coughs> What blessings await you when people hate you and exclude you and mock you and curse you as evil because you follow the Son of Man? Dan, can you bring me my water? <coughs> Excuse me, I've had a little <coughs> cold. Listen, <coughs> we live in a world that doesn't like Christians. We live in a world that will mock us. We live in a world that won't understand when we say something godly. They will not understand it. But God says, oh, that day's coming. Oh, but follow the Son of Man. In verse 23, when this happens, be happy. Be happy. Yes, leap for joy. That sounds so odd. God, wait, they're persecuting me. You want me to leap for joy? For a great reward awaits you in heaven. You are running this race because there's an award. There's a reward, and his name is Jesus. You keep going. You take that baton. They don't like you because you're a Christian. They don't like you because what you say and what you stand for. Well, who cares? Because all that matters is Jesus. All that matters is Jesus. All that matters is Jesus. And if you are doing it with him and you're keeping your eyes focused on him, you will win. You will reach the end, and you will finish strong. I love the word of God. In Galatians 6, 9, it says, And let us not grow weary in well-doing. Come on, for in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. Come on, if you're going through a hard time right now, God knows. Look to him. Keep running your race. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Richard says start. Pastor Joel said keep running. And I say don't stop. You keep going. The third point is remember the end of this story. In Hebrews 2, Hebrews 12, 2, it says the author and the finisher of our faith. I love that. The author and the finisher of our faith. The author and the finisher of our faith. That means if he wrote this story, he was the author of this story, and he's the one that is going to finish this story. And I want to be part of that story that he's writing. I love how he's taking your life and my life, and he's beginning to write manuscripts of God's goodness, manuscripts of restoration, manuscripts of how to do forgiveness the right way, manuscripts of healing manuscripts of coming from the ruins and coming into victory. You see, God is the author and he is the finisher. And church, we have to keep running because the world is trying to silence us. They do not want us to say anything. But listen, you keep running and you be bold and you don't give up and you hold steady just as Jesus did. We finish strong by looking to Jesus. I love Mother Teresa. She was amazing. I mean, this woman understood the love of God. And she said, I am a pencil in the hand of a writing God who is sending a love letter to the world. I don't know about you and me, but God is using us because this is a lost and this is a dying world. I was the lost and I was the dying. 
You were the lost and you were the dying, yet he saved you. He saved me. He redeemed us. He restored us. He rebuilt us. He renewed us. And now we have something to give. That's how you finish strong. Because he has given something for us, we now need to go and give his love to others. Because we are foolish to think that we just take it and do nothing with it. God says, oh no, I didn't die on that cross so that you could get that baton. You can run and then stop and never tell someone about it. You keep running this race. You look to me. You endure with joy. You finish to the end and you tell someone about Jesus. And that is how this is going to end. You finish strong because you have a peace and a part in eternity. And God has called each and every one of you and each and every one of us as his staff to love each other. Because <coughs> love covers. Love covers. Listen, Jesus came for you and me because he loved us so much. And he asked us to run. He didn't ask us to sit. He didn't ask us to go, oh, well, maybe I'll serve God sometimes. Maybe I'll serve God sometimes. I'll serve God when things are bad. How many, of, how many of us do that? You know, it's so true, and this is true for me. Boy, when something hits, my prayer life gets a little bit hotter. I get into that prayer closet a little bit more. And you know what? I think God does know that about us, but I think he's asking us to take it to a new level. Running this race means to take your walk with Jesus Christ to the next level. You know, he didn't do anything mediocre for us. We shouldn't do anything mediocre for him. He died. He gave it all. We can give it all for him. So keep running, church. Keep running. We are running together. You are not alone. We are together in this. We are a unified team preaching the name of Jesus to the highways and the byways of San Bernardino and to the Inland Empire. And I do believe that the Inland Empire will be saved. Well, I love the house of God and all the generations that were presented tonight. And, you know, I want to talk to some of you, though. You say, wow, that was amazing. I want to run this race. I want to start that, Pastor Jess. Maybe you don't even know what we're talking about because you have never, ever, ever been introduced to this Jesus we have talked about. Well, I want to talk to you, and I want to ask you some questions. I want you to examine your heart and I want you to go through these questions and answer them honestly to yourself. If you were to walk out of this room tonight, <clears throat> and if you were to get in a car accident and you were to pass away, and you were to open your eyes, where would you open them? Would you open them in heaven or would you open them in hell? And you say, oh, I don't know. Well, if you say, I don't know, I'm talking to you. I want you to perk your ears up and I want you to... Listen up. You say, well, I hope, I hope I can get into heaven, Pastor Jess. I hope. Well, listen, you cannot hope your way into heaven. That's not how this works. You say, okay, well, I think I'm a Christian because when I grew up, my parents said we were Christians. And I'm an American, and, you know, I eat apple pie, and I drive a Chevrolet, and, you know, I'm just, I'm here, and that's what we do. Listen, you don't get into heaven because we're American or because you eat apple pie or we drive Chevys. Oh, no, no, no. Or because your parents told you that you're a Christian. You don't get into heaven just because someone told you that you're a Christian. You see, Jesus is too intimate for that. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to love you. He wants to be with you. He wants to encourage you and strengthen you on a daily basis. He wants to be part of your world, and he wants you to be part of his. And you say, okay, well, how do I do that? I, I don't know. I've never had that experience. This is how you do it. In the Bible, it talks about a man by the name of Nicodemus, and he says to Jesus, he says, how do I become born again? You say, oh, born again. There's that word, Pastor Jess. Hollywood has just raked it through the coals. They've even made, like, some fashion design out of born again. They make a joke out of it. They even made a cheesy movie about it. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Jesus talks about being born again. And he says, Nicodemus said to Jesus, well, you can't go into your mother's room and come back out again and, and be born again. And Jesus says, no, you're not getting it, Nicodemus. Nicodemus. What is born of the flesh is flesh, but what is born of the spirit is spirit. You see, you ask Jesus to come into your heart, and you ask him to be the Lord and Savior of your life. 
He is a gentleman, and he's not going to run his way into your heart. You have to invite him. And when you do, he will open up your world into such beautiful things that you could ever hope, dream, or imagine. He has a future for you and a destiny for you. He is calling you home tonight. You say, okay, then I want to do that. I want to ask Jesus to come into my heart. Or maybe you did it a long time ago. You say, well, Pastor Jess, I think I did that a long time ago. Maybe I was at a camp or you were at a harvest crusade or you were somewhere and you asked Jesus to come into your heart and you kind of then did your own thing. That's called being backslidden. God says in Revelation, you either are hot or you're cold, but if you are lukewarm, then he will vomit you from his mouth. God does not want you to be lukewarm. He does not want you to be backslidden. He wants you to be fully in a relationship with him, and he wants to be fully in a relationship with you. So this is what I'm talking to you about tonight. Maybe you have never met Jesus Christ, and you want to ask him to be the Lord and Savior of your life. You, maybe you were that backslidden person or, or the one that prayed the prayer and didn't really do anything with it afterwards. I'm talking to you tonight because tonight is your night to go. Tonight is your night to start running this race. These are the people I'm talking to. You say, oh, well, I don't know. I think I did it, but I'm not sure. I just, you know what? Don't take any chances. Make sure. Tonight is your night. You need to make sure. So I'm talking to you now. This is how it's going to go. I'm going to go one, two, three, and I'm going to hit the mic like that. And when I do, on that sound, I want you to raise your hand. You say, oh, no. I knew this church does that. Listen, we do. Let me say, when you raise your hand, you are making a declaration that you want Jesus. And he sees it. In the word of God, it says that if you deny me before men, then I will deny you before my father. But if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my father. Listen, it is worth it. It is an amazing miracle when you raise your hand, heaven rejoices. When you ask Jesus to come into your heart. If you went to hell, you would be raising your underwear on a flagpole and saying, get me the heck out of here. You know? So listen. This is easy to do. You can do this. You can raise your hand. No one's judging you in this room. Everyone loves you. Half this room is praying for you right now. And so this is your time. If you have been running from God instead of to God, I'm talking to you on the count of three. If you have never done this before, I am talking to you. If maybe you did it at one time and you just want to get right and you don't want to be that backslider, but you want to go on this race and you want to keep running like we talked about, I am talking to you. If you don't know and you want to make sure, then tonight is your night. On the count of three. One two, three. Raise your hands. There you go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Keep going. I'm going to look over here. Anybody else? Seven, eight, nine, ten. Anybody else? Tonight's your night. Eleven. Once I see your hand, you can go ahead and put it down. Twelve. 13, 14, 15. Listen, he's asking you to begin your race tonight. And he says he will run with you. He will run with you. You will not be alone. Anybody else? There's point over here. Can you wave? That's you. Be bold. He was bold when he died on that cross for you. Anybody else? All right. All right, I got you back here. All right, well, let's give them a hand. Woo! This is what we're going to do. We're going to ask you to come forward because you do not get saved by raising your hand. You have to ask Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life. So we're going to ask you to come forward. And as you do, we're all going to stand and we're going to cheer you on because we're excited. So come on forward. We're going to pray with you. Oh, Jesus, you made all things new. Oh, yes, you do.
welcome, welcome. Put a smile on your face. You are not going to hell. You are going to heaven. This is a good, happy moment. We're so excited you're here. This is a new beginning for you. But you are going to just be amazed at the walk that God has set before you that race that he's asked you to run, that he will walk with you in. But the first part of this race is go, right? Pastor Richard said now. So what we're going to do is we're going to pray with you right now. And we're going to ask Jesus to come into your heart. So I'll pray and you repeat after me and everyone else will pray with you, okay? And as you do that, I want you to say it with your heart. It's not a lip service. God listens to our hearts. He really does care about you. He cares about your heart. He cares about your life. And so if you will just repeat after me and, and say it with all of your heart. We're going to pray with you. Say, Dear Father God, I come before you. And Lord, I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. Lord, wash my sins. Cleanse my heart and make me new. Lord, I ask that you would come into my heart, that you be the Lord and Savior of my life. That today is a new day. Today, I'm starting this race, and I'm going to run with you, Jesus, and you're going to run with me. And tonight is a new beginning because you make all things new. Jesus, you're my love, and I love you. Thank you for forgiving me, for dying for me, for cleansing me, and for this new life. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Woo! Now, listen, we want to put our application in to be your church. So if you do not have a church, we'd like to be your church. So if you would give us one year of your life, we promise you, you will never be the same again. Is that true? Am I telling a lie? No. So we have many ways for you to get connected, for you to meet people of your own age group and interest. And this is Pastor Joel over here, and he's going to tell you all about that. But we also have something called a spiritual personal trainer, SPT. It's like a physical trainer, but now that you've gotten saved, what do you do now? Well, you need a spiritual personal trainer, someone that's going to train you up, show you what to do, show you what's the next step. So we give away friends here at The Rock, okay? So you guys are going to meet your own friend. You're going to be hooked up. They're going to go through the word with you, and they'll even feed you, okay? Remind them that they need to feed you. So Get a personal trainer, and or spiritual personal trainer, and Pastor Joel is going to lead you to the back. Nothing weird goes on. I'm about as weird as it gets with my cold coughing in the middle of the message. So there you go. Pastor Joel, take them back. Let's give him a hand. Hey, you just heard that altar call. You just wanted to give God all of your heart and all of your life. Now let me lead you simply in a prayer of inviting Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and listen to me and go ahead and close your eyes and just repeat these words after me. I'll go slow. You repeat them. Say these words. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son and that you sent him for me and that he died for me on that cross at Calvary. I believe that his blood washes away my sins, that I am now a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. I receive you now and forever as my Lord and as my Savior. I'm going to turn from sin, and I'm going to turn with all of my heart and all of my life to you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Let it be known in heaven as well as upon the earth that I am born again. I'm a child of God, that I'm saved, and I'm headed for heaven and denying my presence in hell. Thank you, Jesus. I'm alive forevermore. Love you so much. God bless you guys. Everybody just say amen and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. So talk to you later. God bless you. Bye-bye.